Well, folks, I'm back. It's pretty hot at the moment. It's uh, a Sunday, I think the 4th of uh, March, two days time, and I uh, uh, can say I've been resident in Australia uh, for 35 years. I don't know whether that's an achievement or not. It's one of those things. So I'm enjoying a uh, mudgy red ale today or red IPA to be correct. We uh, went to the uh, Lane Cove National Park um, again today. I go there pretty much every other week. Um, cost you $8 to drive a car in there, park, uh, or it's 60 something dollars for an annual pass. Well, I, I get my 60 bucks worth probably within a month or two uh, I go in there so frequently. Um, it's a great national park and there's some great animals in there. And we took a bag of grapes today and fed some dragons, some baby dragons and some, some big males. They love their grapes and they become quite friendly. Uh, yeah, beautiful creatures. And there's so many of them in there too. <clears throat> and then uh, caught up with my daughter uh, this morning who uh, went to make war or the United States of America a couple of weeks ago, came back from there after a skiing, uh, skiing adventure with her boyfriend and their family, his family. Uh, not a place that I'd go, but she seemed to enjoy it, even though she found the, the people there a bit odd. But then I think we all find Americans a bit odd, wanky people. Um, what else? It's just another Sunday afternoon with a beer uh, and waiting for tomorrow to come around and attend the office. But today I thought I would talk about a particular lens uh, in my arsenal that I haven't, um, and, and read that carefully, arsenal, not in my arse, um, that I use and refer to perhaps a lot, and I don't think I've reviewed it much. It's a very short lens, and it's here on my... Canon 6D, this is the lens here, uh, with a macro flash attached, and I'll just remove the flash, just for the sake of this video. It's the MPE 65 lens. It's an unusual lens, it's exclusive to Canon. I don't know that Nikon or Sony or any of the other manufacturers make a lens like it. It's a 65 millimeter lens, as you can see. Uh, it's an f2.8 lens, so it's a fast lens. It doesn't zoom. And weirdly, it doesn't autofocus. <laughs> uh, and weirdly, again, it doesn't have any manual focus ring. And weirdly, again, look at the front of this lens. Look at the piece of glass at the front. Now, if you know anything about macro photography, you know one way of uh, uh, getting a macro uh, a lens to achieve a macro capability is to reverse it. You can get particular mounts that will allow you to reverse a lens so that that little bit at the normally that connects to the camera is at the front and the big lens element is closer to the camera. And that, inc it, that achieves magnification. Well, this is like a lens in reverse that's specifically designed that way. Um, that is a tiny front element and it actually makes things very difficult when you're focusing this lens or trying to see the subject, the little insect in front. Um, but this is a true macro lens. It costs around fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. It's got a 58 millimeter filter thread on the front. It's made in Japan. And it has a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio in terms of uh, magnification. And then it zooms out two times, three times, four times, five times magnification. Now, when you've got, when you're using the lens, when it's back down here, not extended, you've probably got a very small working distance. When you're shooting with the insect, at this um, extension, the insect might be this far. 
from the front of the lens. So it's a very, very tricky lens to use. And a lot of people find this lens almost impossible to use. And because it doesn't autofocus and because it doesn't have a manual focus ring, the way in which you focus this lens literally is to move in or out relative to your subject. So you're, you find yourself actually stop, you stop breathing because the depth of focus of this lens is a millimeter maybe, a millimeter or half a millimeter. You're dealing with incredible sort of magnifications and, and extremes. So you're moving backwards and forwards like this to focus it. And your, breath, your breathing will actually change the focus. So you stop breathing. And there's times where I take a picture of, a, of an insect with this lens um, and I'm gasping for breath at the end of it just to achieve that focus. It's a phenomenal lens. Um, this particular thing on here is the flash mount and you buy them in various uh, sizes. So this is the 58 millimeter. I don't know whether you can see it on the front there, the 58 millimeter one. The flash, this is a, uh, a you'll know flash. Goes in there and you screw it down. And then the macro flash, this front's on there. And you can turn that around as well. Um, great setup, a fantastic lens. I've been using this lens now for probably, I suppose, eight years. Um, and when you when you shoot one to one, which is which is true macro, it's good to a degree. But then you want to get the facets, the the omatidia of the compound eye of a fly. You don't want just the compound eye. You just want each of those individual facets. And this is the lens that will get you right in there and get those details, the hairs, the bristles on a fly. Um, it's a phenomenal lens. It's not for the faint hearted and it takes a while to use it. And I didn't use it for maybe a month or two, a little while back, and then, and then went back to using it and I had to almost learn it all over again. It's, um, it's, a, it's a lens that delivers, but it's a, a lens that takes a lot of practice to be to use right and a lot of people um, will use this lens camera combination on a on a focusing track so you mount your camera on this and then you can wind forward along this rail um, backwards and forwards to achieve it but you've got to use that on a tripod and when you're using a tripod in the field uh, it cuts down on your flexibility uh, I mean, a lot of these pictures that you take off a fly or an insect, you've got to take them within seconds of seeing the insect because it's likely to bugger off. Um, setting up your tripod, mounting this thing on a rail and going back, you know, you're going to lose the shots. So hand holding it and being flexible is a must. It's a hot day. I'm sweating like a goat. I'm cooking at the same time. So I'm going to thank you for listening to this video and uh, wish you all the best with your photo endeavors, if that's your calling. Uh, if drinking beer is your calling, I recommend Mudgy Brewing, as I always do, unofficial ambassador to this great, great brewery. Um, when I first reviewed the Red IPA, wasn't a big fan, um, but I think that's simply because I'd just come away from drinking two pints of the greatest beer in the world. So this one really didn't quite stack up against it, but this one's grown on me. Uh, and I do recommend, I think I recommend any beers owned by this company. Try it, watch it, whatever. Have a great Sunday, keep cool, and let's hope for a good week ahead. Bye.